Every morning these days, I spend maybe an hour or so reading. I have the book called The Essential Rumi, and every morning I read a new poem. I find Rumi to be extraordinary, beautiful, touching, poetic, fresh, creative, wild at times. I love it. I really love it. I love his words and his writing, and I find it to be a perfect way to start my days. Some of his poems are funny. Some of them are majestic and beautiful. And once in a while, I come across a poem that is touching me deeply and is moving something within me and then is, you know, growing a seed in me. And a week ago, I read a poem of his and I sort of stuck to that poem every day now. So for seven days, every morning, I kind of think that I'll read the next poem and keep it moving, but I then decide to reread this one. And so I want to read it with you and to you and then just ponder out loud what it makes me wonder and what it makes me consider and carry within me. The poem is called After the Meditation. Now I see something in my listeners that won't let them continue this way. The ocean flows back in and puts up a foam barrier and then withdraws. After a while, it will come in again. This audience wants to hear more about the visiting Sufi and his friends in meditation. But be discerning. Don't think of this as a normal character in an ordinary story. The ecstatic meditation ended. Dishes of food were brought out. The Sufi remembered his donkey that had carried him all day. He called to the servant there, Please, go to the stable and mix the barley generously with the straw for the animal. Please, don't worry yourself with such matters. All things have been attended to, but I want to make sure that you wet the barley first. He's an old donkey and his teeth are shaky. Why are you telling me this? I have given the appropriate orders. But did you remove the saddle gently and put salve on the sore he has? I have served thousands of guests with these difficulties, and all have gone away satisfied. Here, you are treated as family. Do not worry. Enjoy yourself. But did you warm his water, just a little, and then add only a bit of straw to the barley? Sir, I am ashamed for you. And please, sweep the stall clean of stones and dung, and scatter a little dry earth in it. For God's sake, sir, leave my business to me. And did you curry comb his back? He loves that. Sir... I am personally responsible for all these chores. The servant turned and left at a brisk pace to join his friends in the street. The Sufi then lay down to sleep and had terrible dreams about his donkey. How it was being torn to pieces by a wolf or falling helplessly into a ditch. And his dreaming was right. His donkey was being totally neglected, weak and gasping, without food or water all the night long. The servant had done nothing he said he would. There are such vicious and empty flatterers in your life. Do the careful donkey tending work. Don't trust that to anyone else. There are hypocrites who will praise you, but who do not care about the health of your heart donkey. Be concentrated and leonine in the hunt for what is your true nourishment. Don't be distracted by blandishment noises of any sort. So this is the eighth day in a row where I read after the meditation from Rumi. And the first time I read it, something about it just touched me. And I thought, wow, what a beautiful, powerful and wise story. The second time I read it, I sort of got stuck at the part where he says, there are hypocrites who will praise you, but who do not care about the health of your heart donkey. And when I read that, I asked myself, what is my heart donkey right now? What in my life is currently the old donkey that has carried me all the way to this moment that's in the stall? That's a sideline of the main story. It's not the Sufi, my identity. It's not the ecstatic meditation, the experience that I just went through. But it is my companion that has carried me all the way here and that I'm responsible for and that I love and that I rely on. And on one hand, this could be the body. Right, Our little old donkey that is carrying us from one place to the next and needs tending to, needs loving, needs caring for and nourishment. And do we really take good care of it? And who is really capable of taking good care of it, if not us? Nobody else, right? The servant who's kind of annoyed at the Sufi for meddling in his business and for being so concerned about how the donkey is being tended to. Who is that servant? Who are the servants that are telling us that they're going to take care of our body? Is it, you know, the supermarket aisle, you know, the fast food 
restaurant? Is it the espresso bar or that Red Bull can in our fridge? Is it the chocolate bar? Is it the 70 boxes of supplements that we purchased based on some Instagram fitness influencer that is telling us what we need to supplement to be healthier and fitter? Who's that servant that is taking care of our old donkey heart? Be concentrated in Leonine in the hunt for what is your true nourishment, right? You don't outsource who takes care of your core, your soul, and your body. You cannot outsource that to anyone else, no servant, no expert. Nobody can attend to these things and should other than you. Nobody will know how to tend to. Nobody will care and love enough. Nobody will have enough awareness, presence, and will. You cannot hand these things over to somebody else. No expert, no doctor. All these people might advise you, but ultimately you need to be in touch. You need to know and you're responsible and you need to take care of. Honestly, right now, the donkey as a metaphor for the body seems so spot on to me. But the first time that I asked myself, who is my heart donkey? I, I don't know. I love the word donkey because donkeys are amazing. They have incredible character and they're very stubborn and they can carry tremendous weight and they can be incredibly useful. But let's face it, in our society, at least in Western societies, if somebody calls somebody else a donkey, it's not a flattering comparison. Person, right? People don't usually call their spirit animals. They don't call upon the donkey as their spirit animal. It's not a very powerful, poetic or beautiful animal that a lot of children would like to be if they were an animal. And that's why I find it so beautiful and so powerful. Who is your heart donkey? Who is that, you know, maybe neglected, maybe not as valued or important or prestigious part of you that's at the core who you truly are and what truly matters. And when I first asked myself, what is and who is my heart donkey right now? The answer was my soul and my heart. I was like, right now, I have a sense that I'm neglecting my core and I'm tending to a million things, taking care of all these people, doing the ecstatic meditations, you know, whatever that means as a metaphor in your life. For me right now, it's taking care of family and attending to lots and lots of people and trying to organize many different things and trying to help many people that are important in my life in business in family in friendship with what's top of mind in their agenda in their life and where I can have an influence in and where they might rely on me but through all of this right now what I know what I could sense is being neglected in the barn is myself my core my heart my soul that was three days ago and today and yesterday I realized that it's not just that, it's also my body. I'm working out, I'm eating healthy, but I'm doing also all sorts of things that I'd learned during my fasting retreat and silent retreats that I'd learned my body is not happy with, is overwhelmed with. I had learned some new things that really nurtured and nourished my body and my soul. And I've started to neglect these things, to put them off for later. And reading this poem made all that crystal clear. It made that come back to focus and look back to me in a way that made it very present to me. We all have a core that needs to be tended to. And we all have to be on the hunt for what is our true nourishment. Nobody else can do that. Nobody else can nourish you, can nourish your soul, your body. You're the only one that knows yourself, that has a chance and opportunity to know yourself intimately enough to know what you need and how you need it if you really pay attention and to nourish yourself and your soul and your body. And you can't rely on others to do that for you. You have to attend to that. And you can't be distracted by blandishment noises of any sort, as Rumi puts it. Don't be distracted by what other people tell you. Don't rely on other people taking care of these absolutely essential things for you. N nobody can take care of your soul, of your heart, of your body, of the health of your mind. Nobody can take, you can't outsource that. Anyone else, no matter how competent or powerful of a servant that is, no matter how many reassurances you get that it will be taken care of, that it is in competent hands. If those hands are not yours, they're not. You and only you can take of your heart donkey. 
I know it's a ridiculous thing to say. If you feel like it's ridiculous, there's probably something there for you. I just felt like it's ridiculous to end on what is your heart donkey? But I also sort of love it. Maybe I have to adopt the donkey as my spirit animal. There are some resemblances inside and out to a donkey when it comes to my personality and my life. But what is that? What is the core part of you that maybe has been neglected? Maybe has been in the hands of a stranger, of a servant that has been telling you not to worry, annoyed with your inquiries, trying to put you at ease. Don't think about this. Don't worry about this. This is taken care of. You can focus on all the other things, the more important things. What is that for you right now?